So welcome to the practice of silence. My name is Jen Woodrum. I'm a PD coach from Dallas, Texas. I will be facilitating today. Um, if you are not familiar with Zoom, let me give you just kind of a rundown of how Zoom typically works. Um, if you're in full screen mode and need to access the rest of your computer, if you'll hit the escape key, that will allow you to access your desktop and your start menu and all of that sort of thing. If you have a question or comment for us at any time, uh, please put that into the chat and I'll make sure uh, Sue and Doug get your questions. There isn't, um, we won't be having you uh, talk or, seen, or be seen today. Uh, we tried that last time and did not go well for us. Um, so if you could please share your, your uh, questions and comments in the chat, that's going to be the best way to interact with us today. Uh, we will have a survey at the end of this. We've been doing a lot of great feedback and we want to continue to offer the things that are going to be helpful to you. So if you'll continue to fill out those surveys, that's really helpful for us. And we'll do that at the end. Um, you might want to keep an eye on chat as we go through this webinar. We typically are sharing email addresses and resources and that sort of thing. So um, that's the way you can interact. So Doug Holton and Sue Russell are going to be our presenters today, and I'm going to pass it off to them. Uh, Doug, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself first, and then I'll go and launch into this. All right. Good morning, uh, Doug Haldem here, uh, coordinator for spiritual development. Uh, if you're new to our webinars, um, I work out of my home in Indiana, and um, am uh, just really enjoying my role uh, working in spiritual development. I've uh, been with Wycliffe for about 18 years, and uh, I'm in a variety of roles, but uh, have settled on this as my best all time. Uh, and enjoying it very much. So um, we pray that you'll pray with us as we work to uh, overcome the technical problems we have today. And um, please be patient with us if we run into some glitches along the way. So Sue? Well, thank you and welcome everybody. Um, yeah, Doug and I are gonna reach a new level of partnership today as I talk and he runs the the slides because of my technical difficulties that I'm having with my um, with my internet today. So um, I cannot see myself at all like I usually can. Um, so if I'm in some weird position in your in your screen, I apologize because I cannot see to adjust my own camera. So I'm going to do my best to to be straight on with you guys today. So. Um, with all that said, and that myriad of apologies, um, my name is Sue Russell, and um, I'm in the, also in the spiritual development department here at Wycliffe. Um, my primary role is um, doing a spiritual direction with people. I also do customized retreat planning. If you're interested in any of those kinds of things, you can absolutely contact me or contact Doug. Um, I know Jen will put up our uh, contact information at some point here in the chat or in the FAQ at the end. So I want to start with today with the, with the practice of silence. And in some respects, I'm kind of not surprised that we're having all this problem today because I think the practice of silence is, is really important and in terms of, of our spiritual uh, vitality. And so it kind of doesn't surprise me that that the enemy of our souls is not interested in getting this material out to you guys. So keep praying for us throughout this that, um, that we'll be able to continue on. So let's talk about silence today. Um, there is not much room for silence in our world. We have a lot of noise, a lot of distractions in our lives. I know that that's true for the Western world. Uh, I suspect it's true for most of the rest of the world too. I imagine that even monks in their cloisters have to deal with a certain amount of distraction if only from their, their own thoughts. So let's talk first about just some of the benefits of silence. And Doug, you can go ahead and move the next slide. Yeah. So what are, what are the benefits of silence? Why do we even wanna do this? Well, first of all, silence helps to free us from egocentrism. It takes our mind off of us. We're focusing on, on God. It helps us to experience our deeper heart because we are pushing aside a lot of these truths about who we are and what's really going on with us by the noise and distractions that we have. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, we are so afraid of silence that we chase ourselves from one event to the next 
in order not to have to spend a moment alone with ourselves, in order not to have to look at ourselves in the mirror. And I think that that's certainly true of myself, and I imagine many of you experience that as well. We chase ourselves from one event to the other. Also, silence allows God to be with us in our deep. When we are silent before him and allow him to see us as we truly are and not this front that we put up, God can be with us there. The practice of silence helps us to realize that the world can go on without us for an hour, for a day, or even longer. Silence helps us to pay attention to the Holy Spirit and what he might bring to the surface. And in quietness, we often notice things that we would rather not notice or feel. We might realize that we have a hidden sadness an anger a loneliness or impatience. If nothing seems to happen, we feel like we're wasting our time. In John 16, 12, Jesus told his disciples, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. It's the Holy Spirit's job to guide us into all truth, not just the truth about God, but also the truth about ourselves. Sitting in God with silence, or sitting in silence with God, allows God to be with us in that deep. I talk with my clients in spiritual direction a lot about the discipline of silence. It is a discipline. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes practice. Um, although I am better at it than I used to be, I don't consider this something that comes easily to me at all. I have a couple of friends that seem to be sort of naturally contemplative. They amaze me. Um, I am not good at this. So what is this discipline of silence? We have lost our screen share, just so you know. Okay. Well, I'll just keep talking. Okay. So for Christian spirituality, silence is an active listening enterprise. We are not practicing a silence of nothingness, but a rather a silence in which God is welcome as the one who can fill our empty places. It is us saying, here I am, use this time as you will, not my will, but yours be done. If I need to know something, tell me. And then giving him the space to speak to us. So I find that this idea of God speaking to us brings up some concerns amongst my clients. One concern is, how do I know it's God speaking to me? I've got a few good guidelines, but let me say first that frankly, you are never going to be 100% sure. Just let me tell you that right off. We see through a glass dimly right now. And this is why we need to be discerning and wise and test the spirits. It's why it's good to have a companion and a co-discerner with you, like a spiritual director. But God does promise us that we will know the voice of our shepherd. And so here are some of the ways that I have learned to recognize the voice of my shepherd. First of all, God quotes himself a lot. If you are hearing the word of God from scripture used rightly, that's definitely God. We know that Satan can use God's word, but he can't use it right. And God can't use it wrong. So know your Bible. And when you hear the word of God used correctly, that's God. Secondly, God's words to us are only ever words of affirmation, love, forgiveness, and acceptance. Although his words may bring conviction, they don't produce shame. So if you're hearing a voice telling you how worthless and hopeless you are, that's definitely not God. Third, he always surprises me. I often have some idea of what I think God may say, but he never says it. What he says always just amazes me and surprises me, and it's never what I expect, but it is always just perfect. I've experienced this myself. I have experienced this as I have sat in silence with other directees, and they have this experience where they get an impression of what they feel like God was saying to them, and it just always, it's like, well, I wasn't expecting that. And I'm thinking I wasn't expecting that either. Um, God is surprising. And, and 
he, I can't, I don't know if I can remember a single time when he ever actually said what I expected him to say. It was always way more surprising than that. Sometimes my directees ask, well, how do I know it's God and not just me talking to myself? Hey, Sue, can, you, can you give us just like a, a word or some sort of signal to let us know when you want us to advance? The sure, slide? sure. So go to the next one. So how do I know it's God and not just me talking to myself? That is a great question. Here's the deal. Whether or not God takes a thought that was in your brain and brings it to the surface or creates a thought out of thin air and sticks it into your brain, does it really matter? It's still God. In the silence, you could have thought of a thousand things, but this is what came up. Go with it. See what happens. I am more and more convinced that the discipline and practice of silence with God is one of the most important and most underutilized of all the spiritual disciplines. When we are facing difficulties or trying to make a decision, we read books, we talk to friends, we consult experts, we Google it, we rely on our own life experience and wisdom. What we don't do very well is sit in silence and wait on the Lord's wisdom and solution. Go ahead and go to the next slide. In James 1.4, we read, perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. So God tells us that perseverance brings maturity. The Greek word for perseverance means to remain under. We don't want to remain under. We want to solve and get out from under, right? Go to the next slide. We also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So what it's saying here is that perseverance changes our character for good. Again, we think that solving the problem and moving on is the right and good goal. But God actually says, no, it's actually remaining under the pressure of the situation, of the problem, of the question that we find that we are changed. We don't want to remain under right? We want to solve and get out. But God says, no, this is the sweet spot. This is where your character actually changes. Instead, we give God like 5.2 seconds to come up with a fix to whatever problem we have. And then we decide, well, he's not doing anything. So we come up with our own solution. God's challenge to us is to wait in silence for him, for his word, for his plan. He does actually have one. Next slide, please. So how do we actually practice this discipline? Well, first of all, find a quiet place. Now, Doug, I'm not, yeah, I was gonna say, we're we gonna do this, um, do this little, yeah, there we go. Now, I'm not hearing the audio. Are you guys hearing it? No, there's no audio, but Doug's muted. So unmute Doug and so that he and have him start this uh, little clip over again. Okay, okay Doug, try again. Can you remember the last time you were in total silence and solitude, free from electronic devices, external noises, and completely alone? How long did the quietness last for? We often need to free ourselves from noisy distractions and the constant presence of people around us so that in silence we can separate time to be with God by ourselves, focusing on who He is and on His love for us. Jesus often drew to lonely places. The prophet Habakkuk declared, God is in his holy temple. Quiet everyone. A holy silence. Listen. A helpful way to do this is going on a silent retreat or simply setting aside a few. 
period of time in your daily activities to be alone with God. Make sure you are comfortable and be still inwardly. Intentionally place yourself in the presence of God, choosing a simple word of praise that expresses your desire for Him, such as, I am here, I am with you, and focus on it. If your mind wanders, don't worry. Gently guide your thoughts back to the center of God's presence. Be with Jesus. You may want to choose script meditation to help focus your thoughts and engage in a personal conversation with the Lord. Psalm 139 is a good starting point. Thank the Lord for his care for you. Maybe detailing specifically what he saved you from and what he saved you for. Allow the Holy Spirit to show you the goodness of the Lord that has been following you all the days of your life. Ask the Lord to reveal to you what he loves about you and why he made you. And maybe ask him further questions, such as, God, how can I love you deeper? Where do I need to grow? What breaks your heart? Where is there sin in my life? In all of this, this is his response. Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. An inner impression, a verse of scripture, or perhaps a picture may come to you. Meditate on them. And think if they are in accordance with God's character and His word. And reflect on His love for you. So, am I unmuted now, Nick? Again, Jen? Uh, Jen? Yeah, you're good. Okay. So let me just review that a little bit with you about practicing this discipline. So first of all, you want to find a quiet place. Preferably, and Doug, can go ahead and go to the next slide. Trying, trying, trying. That's okay. T carry on. So preferably, f so find a quiet place, preferably some spot in your house or a corner of your yard, or even sitting in your car in the garage <laughs> where you will not be so distracted by seeing all the chores and the work that you need to do. A good straight back chair is nice since you're less likely to take a nap with Jesus. I have taken many naps with Jesus by being in too comfortable a position, but you do wanna sit comfortably so that you're not distracted by, by pain. So sit comfortably with your feet on the floor, your hands in a relaxed position, with your Reach your Lord and welcome him into this sacred space of time. Take a couple of deep breaths. Don't worry about the thousand thoughts that rush into this time of silence. Just keep coming back to your intention to be with God and listen for him. It doesn't matter that your thoughts tend to drift. It matters that you keep coming back. Ask your questions, then be silent. Start slow with just a couple minutes at a time. You may notice lots of sounds. Let them go. Just be with God. Try for 10 minutes. Afterwards, reflect on what it was like or for you to become simply silent enough to hear background noises. Try this several times a day. What happens to you? The benefits of being silent are often seen in the fruit that it bears rather than in the actual experience of silence. Let me say that again. The benefits of being silent are often seen in the fruit that it bears rather than in the actual experience of silence. In other words, it's not sometimes about what you experience in the time of silence, but how it changes you overall and affects you overall. But what if nothing happens? I hear you cry. Okay, first of all, if all that happens is that you just spent a few minutes in silence, listening to God and saying, here I am, do with me as you will, then that just happened. And that is never a waste of time. 
Secondly, trust that God is always going to give you exactly what is best for you in the moment. So if what you need in the moment of silence is silence and peace, then that's what God, go that's what God is going to give you. It's not a punishment. It's not a failure. It's his gift to you. If what you need is a word or a verse or an image to come to mind, then that's what you'll get. If what you need is an angel to appear in the room, and I'm always hoping that that's what somebody really needs, <laughs> then you get an angel. God will do what is right for you. This communication is his responsibility. You are just making a quiet space to cooperate. Doug, over to you. Okay, I am going to have the honor of leading us through a actual practice of silence, an exercise in silence. And I'll move us hopefully to the next screen, which will allow us to do that. All right. So we will begin by going into silence. So I ask you now, as when I tell you uh, we'll begin, that you just spend about two minutes and um, just focus on God's presence. That's all you need to do, is just focus on God's presence. When distracting thoughts come into your mind, just give them to him and return your focus to him. So let's begin. Now, let's meditate on Psalm 37.4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What does this verse say to you?
Again, Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What desires has God put into your heart? Again, Psalm 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. What does God say to you about your desires?
as we close, spend the next two minutes thanking God for his presence. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time with you. Amen. This concludes Sue and I's presentation, and so now we invite you to utilize chat and uh, share with us how you experienced this practice we did today. It's a deafening silence. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got part of the question from about um, reviewing about God's words being words of affirmation, love, forgiveness, and acceptance. Um, this doesn't mean that his words don't bring conviction, but conviction uh, is not the same as shame, and his words will not bring shame. So that if you're hearing a voice that's telling you you're hopeless, you I can't believe you're dealing with this again, you know, can't you pay attention for two seconds? Those kinds of condemning, shaming words, that is not God. Are you able to see all the comments coming through or do you want me to read them? Yeah. If you could read them for me, that would be great. I'm kind of seeing them, but kind of not. Okay. So I, I'm not going to read, um, for those who are putting comments and questions, I'm not going to read your name. If you only send it to panelists, I will read your name if you put it to panelists and attendees. So 
We have one person who said many times, I will sit before the Lord, but to wait and listen for God was never to me, was newer to me. Um, and then another said, my journaling was drawing and delighting. God delights in us and delighting in the Lord. Mm. Uh, and then we have another that said, I felt God's presence immediately during meditation, but took it for granted. Thank you for reminding us to thank him for being present with us. Great. Uh, and then we have another from Judy Lynn who said, I first started with all doing, but then he directed me to beingness and accepting his presence. And then Rebecca says, I am I supposed to come to practicing silence always with a particular verse or truth or just show up? You know, it both both ways work. Um, there's times when I will practice some silence after I've read a particular passage, if I'm you know, spending some time after my devotions and that maybe something came up in a particular verse that I want to sit with God with. Sometimes I just go to him if I have a question or an issue and and quiet my heart with him and ask him my question. Um, you know, for instance, like right now we're dealing with, you know, a lot of stuff with um, uh, raising finances, uh, financial support. And so I just go with him and I'm like, okay, Lord, what, what do you want me to know about this? What is it that you're trying to show me through this situation? Um, what is that I, what it would be the next step? What do, you, what do I want to do? And then I just shut up for a while and and let him do with me during that time whatever he wishes to do um sometimes a verse will come to my mind that is helpful um sometimes i just sort of get an impression of 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 his presence and his comfort sometimes the quiet is just quiet um it's really um this is like i said before this is god's responsibility to 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 do this communication as he sees fit um, we're just creating that space where we can hear. Judy Lynn shared, I moved also from what I desired and changed to what he desires for me. Mm, nice, nice. In terms of my practice of silence, I um, am very intentional. Um, I have established a pattern of uh, 20 minutes every morning uh, that I spend in silence. And I always uh, read Jesus Calling for the day before I begin my silence. Sometimes that comes up in my time of silence, and sometimes it does not. But um, that's that's my particular practice. Any other questions or thoughts you guys want to share? I'm going to okay, go ahead so, and add a couple. Well, I was just going well, to say, I want to remind people that, that we will be back again next month. Um, if you get the touch points, uh, look in the touch points for the next um, in this series, uh, spiritual practices. I don't remember, Doug, what is the next one? Do you remember? It is rest. Rest. Okay. Looking so the next spiritual next practice month. we'll be talking about next month will be rest. So watch the touch points. It'll give you the link. Jen will have the link in there for, for you to register. If you are one of the people that are participating today that don't get touch points, um, Jen, maybe you could tell them how to contact you directly uh, to find out the registration information. Sure, I'll put my contact information to the- Awesome. Because I know that there was at least a couple people here that don't get touch points that were planning to be here today, so. Okay. I try to also publish it into the um, Dallas Center News and Waxhaw and a couple of other places yeah. as well. Uh, we have another question. How much of it is always intentionally stopping and being silent? Don't monks and nuns often eat meals or work in silence? 
so I'm not, I'm not sure quite what you're asking there. How much of it is intentional, like setting aside a specific time? Is that what you're asking? She's typing, so it always takes a couple minutes for it to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stopping versus doing other things in quiet. Well, I think there's a lot to be said for being very intentional about this. I think the the advantage that monks and nuns have is that this is sort of built into their into their life and in built into the rhythm of their day. Um, most of us are not uh, called to that kind of a, of a life. We're doing stuff and we're engaged with a lot of stuff with uh, with our work, with our families, with all of our stuff. And and I find that for for those of us in that world, we need to be very intentional. It it generally doesn't just happen. So you you need to. There's a reason why this is a discipline. <laughs> because <laughs> uh, it doesn't come naturally to us and and we most of us were not raised in a tradition where and, and, and or in a culture where silence is valued or taught or practiced in much at all so um, yeah I think mostly we're gonna have to be really intentional about it if you want to be silent while you're doing your work go for it but I think there's a point of intentionality that's important uh, Judy Lynn shared, another thing I do is when I reflect on a verse, I read it slowly, meditatively, in several translations. Then I'll also look up words in a dictionary, like the word delight, he gives me, etc. That's great. Remember that this, this way of interacting with scripture, though, and I, I, I think what you're doing is great, Judy Lynn. Um, but also just remember that this is not so much about learning more about God or exegeting a passage of scripture uh, to find out, you know, the deeper meaning. It's really just this opportunity for, uh, for you, your spirit and the Holy Spirit to interact with his word uh, in, a, in a being way, not in a doing way. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but... <laughs> Um, we're being asked, how much does all of this overlap with lect Lectio Divina? Lectio Divina? Divina. Yeah, we're actually going to do um, a whole, uh, one of these webinars, in, it's one of the future ones we have planned, on the practice of Lectio Divina. So, so hang in there. Lectio Divina was a little bit like what Doug did during the practice, where he read it through the, the verse three times slowly with those pauses in there that is part of the, the process of Lectia Divina. So um, these two definitely uh, interconnect. And we chose that exercise today with the interjections in it because since this was a first time experience, we thought it would be helpful for people that, or at least for those it was a first time experience, this could be a helpful way for them to uh, begin to experience periods of silence. So yeah, it had a little more of a structured framework to it. Normally, it would just be you and God. Although I will say, I was talking to one of my directees the other day, and she was saying that one of the things that she figured out is that it's better for her in terms of slowing down and having space to hear these prompts audibly rather than to read them because as she when she reads them she was tempted to just sort of read check it off read the next one check it off read and check it off and and kind of gallop through it so if that's the case for you um, where it's better for you to in in terms of your ability to sort of slow down and take the space um, you can actually, most people on their phones have an app for, you know, verbal memos and that sort of thing. You can actually uh, record yourself giving you these, you know, different prompts and things like that uh, through a space of time where you give that gap of two minutes and, 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 then, and then prompt yourself to the, next, to the next thing. If that helps you uh, to slow down and, and take that space. Is that Um, Judy Lynn shared, I've gone to the silent retreat center here in Arizona, no noise except for supper. So when we sat and ate, at first I felt awkward to sit with others and not talk or interact. 
Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I tell that to people in my spiritual direction sessions that there may be periods of time in our interaction in the conversation that we just go silent because I don't have anything to say. They don't have anything to say. We're just sort of waiting on the Holy Spirit. We don't do that in normal conversation. Those kinds of silences can feel really awkward. So um, I always like to make sure to sort of warn people ahead of time that that's in spiritual direction conversation. That's a very normal kind of an interaction. Uh, so Judy Lynn is actually getting questions that I don't think she can see. Um, there's a request to know where the Arizona Retreat Center is. Is it the one? Uh, is that the center in St. David? So Judy, if you just want to type your answer into the chat for all to see, that would be helpful. And while Judy Lynn is typing that information, I will just say that wherever you are, uh, you, if you, you can search uh, and Google retreat centers, um, silent retreats, and you will usually get a, a wonderful list of places. Uh, they're usually associated, a lot of them are associated with, with Catholic churches, Catholic monasteries. I have found those um, to be very welcoming to people of all faiths. Um, and, and they often have nice accommodations, um, not fancy, but very nice accommodations if you're doing an overnight kind of a thing. And they will often provide meals for you and those sorts of things. So there's, um, there's a lot of places to do that and but don't be put off all the protestants out there don't be put off by the fact that most of them are um around um catholic worship centers i have found them to be wonderful and very welcoming and and very conducive if you want to go on a, a longer silent retreat kind of a thing uh in the past when i've been silent this is wendy uh, in the past, when I've been silent, I've come with a question, then let my mind wander, and by the end of the silent time, I had an answer. There you go. You know, with this, as with any other practice, I always want to be really careful to make sure that you all understand that this is not just another Christian thing for you to succeed or fail at. The goal here is not to become the best little silent meditator in the world. The goal is to... Um, so I don't know if you can hear us, but we, we lost your goal. We lost you, I think. I think I can pretty well finish Sue's sentence for her. Uh, she was saying that the goal is not to become the best practicer of silence. Oh, now she's back. I know, you, you lost me again. This is my horrible internet today. So thank you all for your patience with this. This has been, um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys hanging in there with this. This is not as, as smooth as we like it to be, but you guys have been great. So, so we lost you before you told us what the real goal is. Ah, well, <laughs> you the said real the goal is. <laughs> the goal is. But, um, no, the goal here is, is to be creating a space in which you are better able to hear what the Holy Spirit might want to do for you. Um, so it's, the, it's not to become the best little silent meditator. It's, this is really just a tool. There are lots of great tools. This is just one way in which we cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit and open ourselves to what he is already doing in our hearts. So, um, so yeah, so those of us that, that have grown up in a tradition of, you know, wanting to do lots of good things for God, just I want to be really careful that you all understand that. This is not, the thing is not the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Judy Lynn has never come back with any information. Um, if you want, if you would prefer to email that to me, Judy Lynn, that would I can uh, include it in the FAQs. Anybody else out there in webinar land? <laughs> so far, that's all the comments and questions we've gotten. 
Okay, then. Well, thank you for joining us today for the practice of silence. I've put the link for the survey into the chat a little bit earlier, um, a little bit later today once I've um, downloaded and uploaded the video um, and updated an FAQ. We'll get that out to you. Uh, hopefully that'll come out by the end of the day. So that'll have the recording, it'll have some resources and contact information for all of us and that sort of thing. And uh, we will put out the next um, promotion for our webinars, hopefully within the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for us. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. See you next month.